Do we have it? Amen. Amen, amen. The word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with your word, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Yes, Lord. And all the more as you see the day approaching. I'm going to say that last piece one more time. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Father God, I come before thy presence giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you for this opportunity that you have given us to be here in your house. Asking you, Heavenly Father, to open thy windows of your heavens and to pour your presence amongst each and every individual in this house today. That you manifest like never before, Heavenly Father, and that no one that entered and through your doors depart the same, but full of your joy, your peace, but most importantly, your love. I ask you this in the precious name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. 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 You may have a seat, but do not depart from the presence of our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, God. For we serve a good God. Yes, we do. And Yes, we do. In the beginning here, Pastor mentioned how... Many of us leave and we just stay with Sunday's word and we look for it to just, you know, stay with us throughout the week and to last until the new week, the new Sunday that comes, that we can come and get some fresh manna. But fresh manna is received every day. That's right. When God gave manna, uh -huh. he gave it every day. He sure and did. And he, he, he was very specific that he told them, do not save any for tomorrow. That's because whatever they saved was spoiled. Oh. It was rotted. It was only but one day out of the week that they was allowed to go out and take twice the amount. And that was because they wasn't supposed to work on that last day. They were supposed to rest in the Lord. See, too many of us, we save from one week to another. But by the time the week comes and we're ready to receive something new, what was in us is already spoiled. Because we didn't even have the audacity wow. to share it with someone. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. But today, I'm going to ask you a simple question. And, and, and I just want to see. Because if you really held on to last week, what you should have held on was what the, the declaration the, and the dedication uh, 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 verses that was given to y'all. How many of you remember Amen. what book it came from? Amen. Philippians. 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 See, and that was something you should have held on. Mm. See, and I'm going to give you one verse from there. Because it was from the book of Philippians, chapter 1. And I gave you verses 3 to 11. Yes. And, and that's something that, that when it's declared upon on your life, that's you right. should continuously that's declare right. it yourself. That's right. You can't wait. For every Sunday to come, for the pastor to declare something on your life. Oh, because on. God has already yes. declared something yes. on your life. Amen. Amen. And it's for you to take it. That's right. And before I get up, uh, up a little bit ahead of myself. See, today's theme is very precious. Because it's time to persevere in faith. Amen. We've been talking about time and seasons. Mm -hmm. But it is time you persevere in your faith. That's right. Not someone else's faith, Woo. but your faith. Amen. See, you have to activate your faith. Yes. You have to put your faith into action. Yeah. Amen. So Hallelujah. that you can move forward. Yes. Glory. Bible studies has just been 
encouraging yes. you yes. to activate your faith, yes. to move in faith. Right. So therefore, you should persevere your faith. Amen. It's time. It is. It's time. Hallelujah. For the day is approaching. And you have to be ready. See, we live in days where we feel we have time. Where we feel God understands all things. He knows my heart and he understands. But if God was to come right now, will he really understand? Wow. Mm. Oh, Jesus, help us. There's differences. And our actions show it all. I'm sure we can all relate to that famous phrase. Put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. But today I tell you, put your faith yeah. where your action is. Amen. See, because you don't have to pay for faith. You just have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get somewhere. Because I want to go back to Philippians 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Just temporarily here for a minute. Mm -hmm. You see, then we're going to come back. Because 1 6 says, Being confident of this. That he who began a good work in you yes. will carry it on yes. to completion yes. until the day of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory. He who began a good work in you. Amen. See, there is no man on the face of this earth that has begun a good work in you. That's right. Jesus Christ Hallelujah. is the one and only that has begun a good work on you Sorry. and he will see it through to the day of completion Amen. but I want you to focus on the beginning part where it says being confident of this mm -hmm. see when it says confident you have to understand it is feeling or showing confidence in oneself mm. self assured you have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in yourself in order to be able to move forward. You don't have to look around and see who trusts in you. You don't have to look Come around on. and see who really yes. believes Come in you. Because when yes. you believe in yourself yes. and you trust in yourself, yes. God is going to be right with you. Yes. Because when you believe in yourself, he more he not only believes in you, he will help you move. Amen. Confident. Mm. The problem with us now in days, mm. well, I'm not going to say all of us, because it's just some of us. But we, 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 what you have to realize is that, see, it's the problem, the problem mm -hmm. is that we confuse confident with confidence. Mm. No, not confidence. Confident with confident. But pastor, it all sounds the same. That's the problem. That because it sounds the same, it is not the same. Come on. Confidence is trusting and knowing, believing in yourself. But look what confident is. Confident means a person whom one shares a secret or private matter. Trusting them not to repeat it to others. And we put our trust in the devil, in Satan himself, and we share a little secret with him, and he runs and spreads it out. But yet we think he's not going to share it. Come on. That is his job. His job is the opposite of Jesus Christ. So when you hear something and it sounds the same, understand and know what it truly means before you get involved into it. So today you know that confident is not the same as confident. Mm. It is different. Sure is. One letter makes a big difference. Wow, One choice makes a big difference. Amen. See, it is time to persevere in faith. God. It is time to truly know yourself and know which way you are heading. See, Philippians 1 6, it says, being confident. Confident. But now let's go back to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. The verse is read. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. We have confidence that when we walk 
before the presence of God and we say, I do, you know what you are receiving. Amen. Without a doubt, you know, That's because right. you know your confidence stands Amen. firmly in trusting the Lord. See, to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, the most holy place is not the altar. The most holy place is the kingdom of God. Because he gave his life for us. And it goes on by a new living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. The Bible does not say by the old living way. But by the new living way. Mm -hmm. So you have to have confidence of entering the most holy place. Amen. By the new living way. It's by killing the old yes. and rising the new. Amen. Because when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become new creatures in Him. Amen. The old has to go. Yes. And the new has to rise. Amen. And your faith. Has to move with the new yes. and not the old. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, my God. By a new and living way open for us through the curtain. Hmm. Through the curtain. Yes, God. Which was his body. See, because when he gave his life on that cross. That curtain ripped. Wow, amen. That curtain ripped. Hallelujah. We didn't need a priest to go behind the curtain anymore. Mm. Hallelujah. Because the curtain was torn. Mm. And no matter if you try to stitch that curtain back together, mm. it can't hold together. Amen. It can't stand the same it stood before. Mm. You're going to have wrinkles. The scar is going to be there. You're going to see the stitch and you're going to see the mark. Amen. Therefore, stop trying to stitch up something that God never called you to stitch together. Wow. Hallelujah. You got to have that confidence. You have to have that trust in yourself and know without a doubt that the time is approaching. And because the day is approaching, we must be more firm in the word of God. Good lungs. Good lungs. Hallelujah. She's doing her child of praise. Amen. Glory be your name. She, that's a lesson to be learned there, boy. Amen. See, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Amen. With a sincere heart. With a sincere heart. Yeah, I can keep going and sound like a broken record because we need to understand that it is with a sincere heart. Amen. Not a partial heart. Amen. See, we, we say, God, I give myself away to you. My heart belongs to you. But we want to save a little space for ourselves. It does not work that way. See, when you're going to trust in God, you got to trust and move with a sincere heart. It has to be wholeheartedly. When you say, God, whatever it is, is going to be. But I'm going to trust in you. Because one way or another, you're going to make a way. Amen. Might not be my way, but it's going to be a good way. And with the full assurance that faith brings... See, it's a sincere heart, but also the full assurance that faith brings. Yes, God. Not that you bring. That's right. But that faith brings. Wow, amen. See, it's about the perseverance in your faith. Amen. It's time to move it on. Praise it's God. time to push it over. Hallelujah. See, it is time to persevere in this faith. And, and see... It is time to continue in a course of action. Yes, God. Even if the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. Mm. You cannot base your faith on the process of success. That's right. You cannot base your faith 
on the things that you see yes, is Lord. going on. Come on. You have to continue in that course of action. This is believing. Yes. Regardless of what situation you're dealing with. Let the faith arise. Let your faith take control and yes. charge. And your spirit will yes. move freely in that direction. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our, having our bodies washed with pure water. What are you washing your body with? What are you washing your body with? We take a little soap and we cleanse ourselves and we think we are cleansed and free of all sins and dirt that has come upon. No, the only thing you did was just wash the outer appearance of yourself. You cleaned the flesh, but not the spirit. Because the spirit isn't being cleansed by soap. Amen. The spirit is cleansed with the word of God. We spoke, we spoke Tuesday about the, 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 the little sprinkle. And some people are satisfied with the little sprinkle. But God didn't call you to be satisfied with the little sprinkle. See, the sprinkles dry out. And so would you. See somebody full of glory. And you say, man, if I could just get next to them and get a little sprinkle. Why go next to them when you can go directly to the source and get your own? Hallelujah. Where you can sprinkle upon someone else. Stop looking to receive a little sprinkle from someone else. Well, if that sprinkles on me, then God is going to know. But how about if you get your own glory? How about if you go to the presence of God and let him fill you up so that when you walk, your sprinkles can touch someone else. See, you're not looking to be saved. You're just looking to be touched. But when you're full of glory and you're walking, yeah. your sprinkle will save someone else's life. Yeah. Because you're full of life. Amen. Amen. See, it's, it's all about walking in faith and knowing and understanding. You see, you have to be very careful with who you share your little secret with. Wow. Because you share your secret, and, and, and then in your mind you say, man, should, you know, at, at, at a moment, you know, at your most vulnerable moment, you just give up your secret to somebody. Wow. See, because so you, you, you're help just us. feeling so desperate. Yeah. You just need someone to talk to. Uh, help us, God. When you can actually go to the presence of God. Woo! Help us, Jesus. Then after you share your secret, it makes you feel good. But then after you depart away from that person, your, your mind is running. You say, man. What did I do? I shouldn't have told this person this. Are they going to tell somebody? Mm -hmm. You didn't really trust the person, but at the moment, at the moment, just at the moment, you just gave in. When you're feeling that moment, just go to the presence of God. Let him shake it off. Yes, God. Hallelujah. See, because now you'll be walking around. And, and, and the sad thing is that somebody else come and tell you something of your little secret. And you look and you'd be like, I knew this person was going to tell. I knew this person was going to tell. Wow. That's crazy. But when did you know the person was going to tell? Mm. Huh? Because if you knew the person was going to tell, then you should have known not, not to say nothing. Say nothing. Hello? Wow. See, it's, it's, it's about moving mm. in faith. Amen. But trusting in God. That's right. See, you can tell God your little secret because God's not going to tell nobody. Wow. Bless Hallelujah. Be your name, Father. Okay, God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Mm -hmm. See, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. A guilty conscience. Wow. God is good. Because many of us walk around with guilty conscience. Mm, that is good. But we try to cover it up. Mm -hmm. You can't hide nothing from God. Mm -hmm. You truly can't. Mm -hmm. You have to know. And that's why it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Yes. For he who promised is faithful. Yes, he is. God is faithful. Yes, he is. He's not going to always give you the way that you believe and hope for. That's right. God is faithful. See, we, we've been praying and we've been on that Matthew 6.33 for quite some time now. If that didn't sink into you, nothing will. That's because it clearly says, but now, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And his, his kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. And everything else would be added. We've said it before. Stop trying to add the things on to and then seek his kingdom because you're never going to seek his kingdom in that fashion. Because every time something is added on, you're going to want something else. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, God, I know, I know what I said, God, but I know you're a merciful God. Right. I know you're a merciful God okay. and you understand. So just, just one more thing, God, one more thing. But you know you're lying because the more you get, the more you want. Wow. And the more you want, the more you delay. Wow, say that again, Pastor. That was good. The more you want, the more you get. That's right. But the more you get, the more you delay. <laughs> and, you, and your reasoning, your reasoning doesn't change. Wow. It's the same. God, you understand. God, you understand. But I want you to understand today that God does understand. He also draws a line. He draws a line. And don't worry, we're getting somewhere here. See, and let us consider how many, how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. At least consider how you could spur on to others. Love and good deeds. See, and it says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Sometimes it gets difficult to get together. Right. But we're the very same ones that want to be encouraged by others. Wow. We have to learn to continue to meet together. Amen. It, had, it, it becomes a bad habit. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. We pick and choose what we have time for. We pick and choose how are we going to spend our time. Wow. So true. We pick and choose what's important for our time. But it is important to continue to meet together even more as we see the day approaching. And you can believe that the day is approaching. With all these things in this world, the day is approaching. Yesterday I got a little bothered. Just a little bit. Kept my composure, but I really got bothered. Took the grandkids to McDonald's, right? And we get them the Happy Meal. So I tell the lady, let me get a toy for a boy, a toy for a girl. She goes, oh, we only got Wonder Woman. It's a unisex toy. I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, Wonder Woman ain't no unisex toy. That bothered me for that moment. Like, I, I, I got bothered, but I helped myself. And I looked at her, and the guy that was packing, he said, look, I got one. I said, okay. But the point is, don't ever tell me Wonder Woman is a unisex toy. Because I know if I was growing when I was growing up, if I would have dead picked up a Barbie doll or, or, or Wonder Woman, I, I would have got a good beat down. Because back in those days, pops didn't play. And my mom's wasn't into that thing where she said, oh, it's okay, don't worry, just play with the doll. That, that didn't work like that, like that. It was very clear. The boys played with the G.I. Joes and the girls played with the Barbie. And nowadays, you can't allow, son, you, you, you can't allow, you know, your son as he's growing up to play with the dog because if he starts to play with the dog, the mentality is going to be a little different. 
Where is our ethics? And the lady didn't look strange to me, but I just got bothered. And when I told her, I told her again, because the guy looked, and the other girl looked, and they were like, what's going on? I said, I, I just want to make sure y'all y'all understand that Wonder Woman never has been a unisex toy. She never has. And we may say, well, why did that bother you? Because of all the other things that follow right after that. Amen. With everything else that's going on right in front of our face. Amen. Oh, you can't tell your child. Don't name your child. You know, let your child pick his own name. You're a boy. You're a girl. That's all you need to know for now. Later on, you'll decide. Oh, no, you're, you're an ex. <laughs> Now we become moral characters. <laughs> we cannot compromise our belief to the belief of the world's ways. We have to stand firm. And need more now than never before. More now than never before. Because if you start losing yourself, you can't expect your child to be saved. Right. You can't force salvation on your child if you're not saved. That's right. You can't. And you can't let your child control your home. That's right. But this is what this world is coming to. Yep. Little by little. The pastor told me the other day that some child was suing their parents because he didn't ask to be brought into this. He didn't <laughs> consent to being born. What is going on? Let me take you out then. I didn't consent to be born, so now I'm going to sue you because you're making my life miserable. Oh, yeah. What's going on here? It's time to pers persevere in our faith. Amen. And what we believe in. That's right. And we have to continue to move forth. Amen. The day is approaching. Yes. And we take it for granted. Yes. And we start to think that we have time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you that time does not run on our side. Yeah. The world may let you believe you have plenty of time. But I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Not right now. In a minute. In a minute. Because you see, time to persevere in our faith. Amen. Time to take that course of action. Santo. Bible studies has been pushing us that way from the very first class. Because it's all about the healing. And we need to be healed That's in right. order to move in faith. That's right. Come on. Come you on. have to know yourself. Yes, God. You have to have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. Bartimaeus. And you can find all of these stories I'm about to tell you in the book of Mark. Because I'm just going to paraphrase. I just got to get you somewhere. But the blind man, the beggar, who just sat there for years and years because all he could do was beg. He couldn't go out and get a physical job. So he sat there. But one day, one day, he heard Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And that's all it took. That's all it took for him to jump up. See, he persevered in his faith. Thank you, Father. He didn't let his surroundings dictate what he should do. But when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he jumped up. Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And the more they told him to shut up, the louder he screamed. Right. Problem with us is that when you're told to shut up, you shut up. You shut up. Mm -hmm. See, when you're supposed to speak, you don't want to speak. When you're not supposed to speak, you want to speak. You got it confused. Amen. You got it twisted. Yes, God. Amen to that. You got to know when to shut up. Amen. And when people say, hey, be quiet, you disturb. No, no, no. 
This isn't about you. This is about me. Louder than louder. Yes, Lord. And you just shout out louder. Yes. Lord, I need you now. That's right. I need you now. Hallelujah. I mean, they say me, I, Lord, I need you more today than ever before. Yes, God. And you just keep going. Yes, Lord. Because, see, your voice is going to outnumber any amount of people that's around you. That's right. Because Hallelujah. when it comes from the heart, see, a sincere heart and full of assurance yes. of what faith brings, yes. he shouted. He knew what he wanted. Yes. He declared. Yes. And profess, Lord, have mercy on me. Until Jesus said, bring them over here. He called them right over. That's right. And the people just looked like, what? The people found them a distraction. But there was a purpose for that distraction. Bartimaeus had a need. Thank you, Jesus. He had a need. And the only one that could have fulfilled that need was Jesus Christ. So see, he didn't listen to the voice of the people telling him to be quiet. He listened to his self-assurance. He listened to himself. And the spirit in him that said, shout, shout a little louder. Can you imagine? The louder he shouted, the taller he began. He became. Yeah, come on. The louder he That's shouted, right. the taller he became. Yes, he did. Because you see, he stood out in the crowd. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you standing out in the crowd? Mm. Huh? Hallelujah. When Jesus called the movie, he told him, "What do you want from me?" What can I do for you? Jesus knew. And Martin said, I just want to see again. I so said, I want my sight. And Jesus told him, go, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Jesus didn't touch him. But see, Bartimaeus had a sincere heart and full assurance of what his faith was about to bring him. And he didn't shut down or quiet down for no one. While people told him, shut, shut up, quiet down. All he heard was, shout a little louder. Shout a little louder. Shout a little louder. You got to be bold. You got to know yourself and trust yourself and say, the time is here. This is my time. Because his faith healed him. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He continuously Lord. spoke of the woman with the issue of blood. Wow. In and out, in and out, in and out. Hallelujah. This woman ran all around town going to see the best doctors. Hallelujah. And giving up everything she owned. Just to be healed. Yes, God. But nothing and no one was able to help her. Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Barnabas. Because it says when, when, when Jesus called them, Bible registers, he threw his cloak right off. Mm -hmm. And we continuously remind you. See, that cloak identified him mm -hmm. yes, as a blind yeah. person. Yes. Yeah. But his faith, his faith, which was about to heal him, was activated. He didn't walk over there with his cloak on, showing himself to be blind. He took that off because he knew he would no longer need it Amen. to identify him. That's right. He was ready to receive his new cloak. Hallelujah. Come, Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak, Holy Spirit. See? You can't go to the presence of healing. To, uh, to the presence of God asking for healing. And then walk away with your sickness. Mm. Wow. Shake it, um, it again, yes, God. Say it again. You got to leave that garment of sickness behind. And move forth. Yes, Lord. 
Because when you go into the presence of God, fully assured, it does not matter what your situation is telling you. What matters is what God is telling you. And if God says, go in peace, you have been healed. You better believe you can walk in peace. Because this woman, she risked her life. But it did not matter to her. Because her life was already at risk. Hallelujah. But when she left, out into the crowd, I'm almost sure that she left that garment behind. Amen. She didn't leave. She didn't leave the house with the clothing that described her as being sick. Because she said, if I can simply touch the garment of his clothing, I will be healed. She left the sickness behind and took her faith with her. Because when she touched, that power, that virtue came out of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus was on his way. He was on a mission. But when that woman touched him, he had to stop. He had to stop. Just to let that lady know. See, when the lady touched him, when that woman touched him, she felt the shift and the change in her. Hallelujah. The same way that Hallelujah. Jesus felt the virtue come out of him. Yes. See, the virtue that came out of him entered into her. And she felt it at the same time. Amen. Because she knew that she was healed. Amen. Amen. She didn't second guess herself or her actions. <clears throat> Stop second guessing yourself. Bless you. In your actions. That's right. I like. That's why it says with confidence. Yes. See, being confident and knowing what God is about to do for you. Amen. Yes. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Knowing without a doubt. And of course, we had Jarius, mm. the synagogue leader. Mm. And what you have to understand is that all of them <laughs> has something in common. Hallelujah. Amen. All of them has something in common. Because Barnabas, he heard Jesus was in town. And he shouted. The woman with the bleeding issue. She heard Jesus as Nazareth was coming around. And she shouted. She moved. She moved. Jarius had to have heard Jesus was around. That he packed up and left and said, I'm going to look for him. Because he's the only one that can heal my child. He didn't wait for doctors. See? But he went out. To seek yes, God. Christ. Yes. He went out and found them. And went before his presence and says, I need you. Right. Hallelujah. I need you to come and lay your hands. Yes, Lord. On my daughter. Hallelujah. Because she's about to die and you can give her life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all in the timing. Mm -hmm. yes. In the timing. Hallelujah. See, it's all on Jesus' timing. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bartimaeus, he just shouted, Son of David, have mercy on me. See, he knew that if he just spoke and asked for mercy, that Christ would have mercy on him. The woman said, if I can simply touch the garment of his clothes. Hallelujah. But Javier you, said, if you can come and lay your hand. If you simply lay your hand. See, it's the timing. Yes, God. Sometimes God just wants you to shout. Yes. Sometimes he just wants you to go to That's his presence right. and touch the clothing. Come on. And other Hallelujah. times he just wants you to tell him, yes. Lord, here I, here I stand. Lay your hand on me and I shall be healed. Hallelujah. When you have a sincere heart 
and you are fully assured of what your faith will bring you, God will answer you. God will answer you. See, we can speak of the times and the seasons throughout because the Bible is full of times and seasons. But God worked his way, not the people's way. Amen. Amen. You Hallelujah. have to believe that there is a time and season in your life for everything. That's right. But the days is approaching. The day of the coming is approaching. We're getting closer and closer to it. You don't have time to play with Christ. That time is over. Yes. Hallelujah. See, it is time to persevere in the faith. It is time to continue in that course of action. Even in the face of difficulty. Yes. Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. In the face of difficulty. Yes. You have to know how to go face to face with it and say, you no longer have any, yes, any Lord. control of my life. That's right. Hallelujah. Any control yes. of my emotions. Yes, God. Any control yes, of me. Lord. Because I have risen up. That's right. Hallelujah. I know who I am. Glory be your name. You want to be different, then you have to start acting different. Hallelujah. You want to think different, then you have to start believing different. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. I, I'm going to have to have a meeting with the children. <laughs> I, I, I'm not liking their dad. <laughs> Sensing some trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Even in the face of difficulty. Yes. <laughs> you have to persevere. Yes, Lord. You Amen. have to continue to be confident. Yes, God. You have to trust in yourself. Reassure yourself that you know who you are. You are a child. Of the most high. Hallelujah. Nothing more. See, not a title, not a position is going to give you a greater relationship with God. A sincere heart and being full of assurance of what your faith is going to do. Amen. Is what's going to give you a greater relationship with God. Hallelujah. See, God does not pick by the title that you carry. Yes, Lord. He does not choose by the position you hold. Hallelujah. He chooses by who you are. Yes, Lord. He chooses by how your heart is positioned with him. Yes, God. Remove the things of the world. Yes, Lord. And place the things of God. Yes. And you will truly see a difference in yourself. And I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. But I want you to follow me in the book of Matthew. In the book of Mark, 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 Mark. We're going to stay in the book of Mark. Chapter 13. Book of Mark, chapter 13. Because you see, we begin to believe we have time. But time is not on our side. Time runs against us. See, we're going to start from verse 32. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, and I'm going to start with verse 32. Hallelujah. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge. Each with, their, each with their assigned task and tells the other at the door to keep watch. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, wow. whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. 
If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. Wow. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Mm. Watch. 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 See, we don't have time to play with Christ. Amen. No one, no one, no one knows the day or the hour. There is no angel mm -hmm. that can come and warn you. Mm. The sun couldn't warn no one. That's right. See, we think we have time. But time is not on your side. Time is not on your side. Yes. You have to be on alert. Yes, you have to be on watch mm. of what is to come. <laughs> yeah, I love them. That's why, the, that's why God says, let the children come unto me. <laughs> we serve a good God. But for those of you who think you have time, Please be aware that the day or the hour, no one knows. And I promise I'm going to finish. Because I can't finish without giving you all these scriptures. And it goes right back to the book of <coughs> Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm going to read 26 and 27 right from the same, right after, right after what we read. See, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Yes. Now everybody that has ears, listen to what, listen to this very carefully. Listen. Hebrews 10, verses 26 and 27. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, wow. no wow. sacrifice for sins is left. Yes, my God. But only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume. The enemies of God. Wow. If you don't get it, I want you to get it right now. You are either for God or you are against God. Amen. You cannot be in the middle. You are either one or the other. But truly, truly believe if you can, if you deliberately keep on sinning after you have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. In other words, you are not going to go get a chicken and cut the head off and think you're giving Christ a sacrifice for your sin. There is no sheep, no lamb, no goat out there that will be sacrificed to cover your sin. Amen. All that has been done away with. Mm -hmm. Christ, 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 the Lamb of God has already sacrificed his life for yours. So if you deliberately, see, if you deliberately continue to sin after you receive knowledge of the truth, there is no sacrifice that is going to save you. None whatsoever. Let us rise up to our feet. The day is approaching. You have to know what it is that you are seeking. You are either seeking the kingdom of God or you are seeking a life in the world. The life in the world is only going to bring you a fearful judgment of raging fire that will consume you right from the face of this earth. Mom. Amen? Amen. 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 Close your eyes. Father God, we come before thy presence giving you all the glory and honor, thanking you for this opportunity that you have given us you, to be here on this day, my God. Thank you, Jesus. For we believe and we have confidence in ourself, Heavenly Father, and we truly, truly know that this is the time to persevere in our faith, that we must move forward. Yes, God. Doing your will, my yes, God. Yes, God. Knowing and believing that you are closer to God <laughs> Than you were yesterday, my God. Yes. Knowing, Heavenly Father, that you are real. Knowing that you will shield us and protect us. Yes, Lord. Knowing Amen. 
that you will always believe in us as long as we believe in you. I ask you this in the precious name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you manifest like never before, my God, and that no one departs from these doors the same, but full of your joy, your peace, and love. In the name of Jesus, amen.